Hello, welcome back to the most inconsistent art channel of all time. Once again, a doodle session in the background with no direction, just kind of letting the Hank take control, put the frontal lobe in the back seat. In case you missed the announcement, if you want to start a channel but you're afraid your first video is going to be cringe, I will be unprivating the first video I uploaded. It's ultra cringe and I absolutely hate it, but if it's going to give you guys any assurance, it'll be there. It'll stay up for like a day or two, maybe a week, we'll see. That said, episode 2 of Hot Takes from a Noob Artist. If you want to share your own hot takes, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Just keep it respectful, okay? Maybe I'll read them in the next video. Shoutouts to this one hot take comment in the previous video saying, quote, A lot of artists on YouTube who give advice or talk about art are bad at it. Their art doesn't look bad, but it's not great either. Often, it's said artists have imposter syndrome, but from their videos, they don't seem like they have it. That is indeed quite the spicy take, and it's fair enough, I can see what they mean. But I realize I have been one-upped, so today, let's see if we can loosen the screws a bit. Keyword here is loosen, alright, not outright go wild. Hot take number one, talent is a myth. Kind of. You've probably heard this before, right? Ooh, you're so talented, I wish I could do the things you do, or... Some people are just gifted with talent. What the people who say these things don't realize is talent is only a fraction of what makes someone good at something. Sure, someone could be born with a pretty good sense of drawing, knowing which colors complement each other, somehow, you know, knows anatomy from the get-go. All this from a very young age, which is honestly quite, you know, impressive. And also looking at sites like TikTok and YouTube, a lot of these young artists who've just entered or barely graduated high school seem to be at the level of what, you know, the level a lot of or older artists, the level a lot of older artists want to be at, which can be discouraging, but fear not, my dear viewers who are considered to be of hag age, art is something you can pick up at any time you want. It's never too late to learn and improve that skill, as long as the proverbial bucket has not been kicked. But here's the thing with talent. Someone can definitely be born with an innate skill, but what people perceive as talent is for the most part the culmination of countless hours of practice, frustrations, failures, tears, perhaps broken objects. Here's how I see it, right? What people see as talent is kind of like the basics or the training wheels. Something to help you transition from the crawling phase to the walking phase. Let's say, for example, there is a child listening to a song and that child stomps its, sorry, I mean, their feet on beat. Every single time, on time. Maybe they throw in a couple of hand clapping and some arm flailing as well. The older children and adults will all clap for them and say, wow, that child is so talented and they're going to be a great dancer someday. Now, this can go two ways, all right? First scenario, they keep practicing, maybe watch some dance tutorials on YouTube. Like, I don't know, let's say they want to learn how to breakdance. They learn how to do a windmill and how to do a backflip, hopefully in a controlled environment where the ground is soft and not on hard floors like cement or marble, otherwise they'll get horribly injured. And maybe that does happen. They might fall on their head and get the wind knocked out of them when they fall on the ground wrong, maybe even break a leg. Body filled with bruises, but because they want to keep improving their skills and testing their boundaries, they keep pushing themselves to break their limits. To prove to themselves that whatever level they are at right now, they know that they are capable of much more and that it's not their final, final form. They're going to be exhausted going from school to dancing in their bedrooms, watching tutorials on YouTube without guidance or going to dance classes, maybe play some games with their friends online during the day to like, I don't know, doing homework, maybe do some chores. And then finally going to bed to have the energy for the same grind, starting every single day with a full tank, ending the day with the tank empty. And throughout the months and years, they'll showcase their hard practice skills in events or when they're hanging out with their friends and every single time they do, they hear, Wow, you're so good, I wish I had your talents. And the now older child smiles, happy with the fact that their effort is being appreciated because that's the thing with talent. No one sees the hard work. The blood, the sweat, the tears, the bruises, the frustrations you've put in to obtain the talent. Because every single time you showcase that talent, there is a time gap. That gap can be days, weeks, months, years at a time, but every single time you showcase your hard work and they see gradual improvements compared to the last time, you are most likely going to be called talented. So does talent exist? Yes, but only if you look at the result at a surface level. Now I said that there were two scenarios when it comes to the word talent. Let's rewind to when that child was first being called talented. Potentially, they do practice for a few months, maybe years, but eventually they get complacent because it gets to their head. 
And that's when they stop practicing, you know, get complacent and they just kind of let that stagnate and let their talents rot. Which is why sometimes I think telling someone that they're talented can be harmful. Moral of the story, don't, don't tell children that they're talented. Obviously I joke but, you know, I would say tell them that they're talented in order to encourage them. Speaking of children, hot take number two, get children off social media. Considering the amount of toxicity I and many others see online, especially on TikTok and Twitter, I I'm gonna keep calling it Twitter, I don't care what the muskrat says. I don't think anyone under 18 should be allowed to post anything on social media. Now before you grab the harpoons, allow me to explain my stance. Social media is pretty fucking toxic to one's mental health. I think we've seen this time and again, especially when it comes to the art community. I said this in the previous episode, um, some people tend to correlate the engagement and likes they get on their post as their post being good, which means, you know, a, a validation. But when they don't get that consistently, they start to feel discouraged. That's just one part of it, alright? Now, I don't particularly think too highly of children, admittedly. I, I think they're loud, dirty, filled with viruses, they're obnoxious, too much high energy for me. But I do believe that children are important not only to survival but to innovation and carrying legacies when they become adults. Which is why I tolerate them. And as everyone eventually feeds the soil, it's important to not let the younger generation to feel discouraged because they got zero likes on their online post. And this isn't even just for art, okay, I'm casting more of a white net here, but I'll be focusing more on art. Which brings me to comments and quote unquote fixing. So we're all pretty much familiar with what happens to some artists on TikTok and Twitter, the absolute shitholes of the internet. When an artist who is clearly just starting out or not at the level some asshole is and mistakes are evident, some asshole decides to fix their art which then turns into a whole trend of other immature artists on the platform fixing their art. Now I didn't follow the drama closely but I do remember of one artist on TikTok who, you know, was chased off the platform because of their art style being called horrible. I think it was the jelly art style or something but someone fact checked me on this. And I think that's really where I'm coming from. I mentioned kids are horrible and that could very well be true in their personal lives and if they are being bullied in real life for being the odd one out and they turn to social media and rely on that as their form of validation, things can turn sour very fast. Being made fun of both online and offline is, I'm gonna tell you, it's, it, it can take a very heavy mental toll. Especially for children where it's literally their formative years. Sure, some teens in their high school are, you know, are more accepting of the comments and constructive criticisms and can roll with the punches, which is great and all, and you can also make the argument that parents should be monitoring what their children are consuming on the internet. But seeing how unruly, loud, rude, and obnoxious some young children can get, my opinion of you know, restricting social media access to those who are 18 and over is a hill I am willing to die on. And the old saying is going to be true. The internet is always going to do what the internet does. Anyway, that's it for the yap session. Sorry, I only have two takes for you right now. Alright, bye. Get out of here.